back to my YouTube channel, World on a Whim. Today I am taking you all with me to the top 10 filming locations and just legendary locations for King Arthur. I went on the trip with Visit Britain and I think it was 11 or 12 other, I can't remember at this point, it was back in April, influencers and each influencer was from a different country. So we had Spain, we had Brazil, we had Malaysia, Australia, Canada, the United States, um, I'm forgetting a lot, Switzerland, Germany, there's a few. Um, but we all came together to view the locations that are based around the legend of King Arthur. We're gonna start off in Snowdonia, Wales and slowly make our way up to the border between England and Scotland and Hadrian's Wall. Number one, Snowdonia National Park. Take the Snowdon Mountain Railway about halfway up Mount Snowdon to see the most gorgeous landscapes. Our journey would take about two hours, including a half hour stop over at Cogwin. King Arthur apparently killed the mountain's most famous resident here. His name is Ritta. This giant would create a cape from the beard of his enemies, which is nuts. And the Snowdon Mountain, actually, it's a very interesting story. The first person to ever walk Mount Everest actually tried, like, practice by climbing Snowdon Mountain, which we're about halfway up right now. If you go up along that way, then you're gonna go to the top. to Vivian Quarry. It's just across the street basically from the Land Bear station of the Stoughton Mountain Railway, which is the one at the bottom. Right behind me here is this massive quarry that King Arthur jumps off of in the movie. Actually, a stuntman jumps off of, but you get the idea. Now, us plebeians can't jump off the quarry, but we can scuba dive there. Number three is Carnivorn Castle. You just have to drive about 15 minutes from Snowdonia National Park and you will be in the town of Carnivorn. It's a beautiful town with multicolored buildings. And here is a castle that was built by King Edward I. And it's also the birthplace of the first Prince of Wales in 1284, which is why the King of England today is also known as the Prince of Wales. Fun fact, I totally had that like aha light bulb moment when I found that out. It was built by Edward I in 1283. Um, when he just about finished suppressing the Welsh and he built all these castles on the North Wales coast um, basically as a statement to say that he was here and uh, that the English had taken over from, from the Welsh. It's also a great place for hide and go seek so make sure to bring a friend and get your hide on. Edward I, who's the guy that built this place, used King Arthur and manipulated stories about him to increase his notoriety and power and everything here as king. This bird is such a diva. She's like yeah. in his face taking photos and he <laughs> is hamming it up. He loves it. I wear a size 10 shoe, so if I walk down these stairs, totally horizontally because otherwise there will be a situation my head will be at the bottom of this stark scary place okay so from here on out i'm guaranteed to butcher the names but number four is nant gwinnett pass put that down below so you get that drive along the a498 and you'll see a beautiful mountainous landscapes the king arthur film filmed extensively in this area Everything where Vortigan is asserting his power over all of the people is in this location. It's all at the campsite. Number five are three gorgeous lakes that are found in Wales. If you're wondering where King Arthur's sword Excalibur currently resides, it's probably going to be in one of these three lakes. So yes, there are three, but luckily they're close together. So if you are really eager to find it, good luck. I will not be joining you. But they also film a lot of the King Arthur movie at these lakes. The whole Lady of the Lake scene, these lakes. 
Number six and our final stop in Wales is Boots Ecoa, and I actually think I have said that one right. This ridiculously stunning area is where a lot of the film crew stayed. Make sure to walk over the Pont E Pear Bridge to see gorgeous views of the river. And pro tip from the location manager on set, go to the Taiguin Hotel restaurant for some Welsh lamb and cheese. Number seven, Oldswater Lake. We've now ventured from Wales into Northern England. We are here at Oldswater Lake, which is actually the second biggest lake in England. It's about 8.7 miles, I believe. And we're going to be taking the oldest boat. Uh, her name is Lady, because she's the lady of the lake. And she was built in 1877. Our steamer was actually called Lady of the Lake, which I don't think that was so coincidental. It's also a name, one of the most pivotal characters in King Arthur. Number eight, King Arthur's Round Table. Who's with me here? Raise your hand if you're with me here and thought that the round table was actually a table in a building, because I did, and this was my epic fail of trying to explain the table to you guys. I'm standing at the site of what is believed to be King Arthur's Round Table, right there. So wrong. The round table was actually most likely a meeting spot during the Neolithic period. So right where I'm standing here was a very popular meeting point because it's kind of in the center between England and Scotland and everyone would converge here and meet all of the kings of each of the territories. And actually it's really interesting. You can kind of see the outline of a circle, which is why it was equated to the round table. And then you can kind of see up here that there are ripples in the grass which are believed to be stadium seating for jousting matches and things of that nature because at this time this was a very high profile spot for kings to meet. Number nine, the city of Carlisle. We are currently in the town of Carlisle and we're visiting Carlisle Castle. The town of Carlisle is rumored to be the headquarters, um, the Camelot for King Arthur. And this castle right here, dun, 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 this castle was the most besieged castle in all of Great Britain. And apparently there's also 37 ghosts that roam the castle. So this area right here is supposed to be the most haunted part of this castle. Where are you ghosts? Sadly, the ghosts are not in the mood to come out and play today. The castle uh, itself, yeah, you get some fantastic views from the, uh, the castle walls back across the Lake District, across to the Scottish Hills, and, and also to the east as well. The castle was founded by and um, William II. He was the son of the famous conqueror that uh, put pay to the uh, Saxon King Harold uh, in 1066. Um, but William the Conqueror never got this far. So one of the best parts about this trip is that every single person on the trip is from a different country. And right here we have Hello. Adding from Australia. He's a super awesome photographer. And we have, <laughs> no problem, you are. <laughs> Stephanie, come on in here. Hello. From Hi. Switzerland. And she is a YouTube lifestyle. Yeah. Life what? Lifestyle YouTuber. Lifestyle actually. YouTuber. <laughs> what has been your guys' favorite part of the trip so far? Well, for me, it's Wales. I don't know why, but I just fall in love with the region. It's yeah. mm -hmm. so beautiful, so green. Yeah, the just landscape. Look, yeah, the landscape yeah, just looks wonderful. peaceful. Yeah, yeah. It's so totally impressive. Agree. Yeah, yeah. The summits on Snowdania. That was yeah. my favorite oh my too. Yeah. The yeah. railway. Yeah, oh my amazing. gosh, and that mountain, the views. Were yeah, just yeah, but also what you said before that we are like all from a different country. This is like yeah. awesome. It's, yeah. it's so such a fancy interesting. Group. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really interesting to like yeah. Yeah. see all the different cultures interact and all these True. different influencers from all over yeah. the place and yeah. kind of how we all work in each individual country and how we work with other countries. It's awesome. 
awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Definitely, cool. definitely. <laughs> Pay a piece of Pay a Yeah. Piece. And finally, number 10, Hadrian's Wall and one of the 16 remaining forts along the wall, Bertoswald Roman Fort. This is the only fort that has been consistently inhabited since the Romans left, and it's one of 16 forts along the wall. It could have been the site of Camelot, but the more likely Arthurian connection is the Battle of Camlan, which was fought nearby. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am finally done with finals, so I am hoping to put out a lot more content this summer. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.